Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tetsu Iwata and I will present our work on iterative block ciphers from tweakable block ciphers with long tweaks. This is a joint work with Ryota Nakamichi. A block cipher E is a mapping from a key space and an n bit space into an n bit space. And n is called the block length. We will write this as nbc, and if we fix a key k, then ek is a permutation over n bits. Construction of a secure and efficient block cipher is one of the most important problems in symmetric key crypto. And in this work, we continue studying this problem. More precisely, uh, we are interested in a provably secure construction. A standard security notion is the strong pseudo-random permutation notion, or SPRP notion. In the real world, the adversary has access to the encryption oracle and decryption oracle of a block cipher. And in the ideal world, the adversary has access to a random permutation pi at its inverse permutation. The goal of the adversary is to distinguish the two cases and we measure the success probability with this advantage function. Ruby and Rakoff showed that uh, for round Pfizer cipher with n bit pseudo random functions is a strong pseudo random permutation. This uh, shows two round Pfizer cipher, and they showed that for any adversary that makes q queries, the advantage is at most q squared divided by 2 to the n. This is called a burst depend with respect to the input and output lengths of the underlying primitive. This bound requires q to be smaller than 2 to the n over 2, and it is natural to ask if there is a construction with a better security bound. A beyond burst bound secure construction refers to a block cipher that remains secure, even if the number of queries is greater than 2 to the n over 2. Previous analysis showed that if we increase the number of rounds in Pfizer cipher, then the construction has beyond burst bound security. A different approach of using a tweakable block cipher as a building block to construct a block cipher was initiated by Minematsu. Tweakable block ciphers are generalization of block ciphers, and they take an additional input called a tweak. So a TBC tilde E has a tweak space T, and if T is a T bit uh, space, then T is the tweak length. And we will write this as NT TBC. If we fix a key k and a trick t, then this becomes a permutation over n bits. TBCs are useful as they can be used to obtain encryption schemes, max, and authenticated encryption schemes. There are many constructions of a TBC based on block cycles, including LRW1 and LRW2 constructions and XEX construction. As Minematsu did, we consider the opposite direction of constructing block ciphers from tweakable block ciphers. Uh, this makes sense as there are a number of recent proposals of TBCs as a primitive, and uh, some of them are listed here, and we can obtain a block cipher with a large block length.
There are several block cipher constructions from TDCs. Minematsu in 2009 constructed uh, two NBC from N NTDCs and universal hash functions. In 2010, uh, Coron et al. constructed uh, two NBC from N NTDCs only. And in 2015, Minematsu constructed uh, DNBC from N tau NTDCs where D is tau plus one and tau is at least one. Uh, in this work, uh, we focus on iterative constructions of block cycles. Namely, we focus on a fixed input length skid permutation and we do not consider variable input length constructions. Also, we only consider the case that the block length of the obtained block cipher is a multiple of n bits. Uh, this shows the construction by Kogon et al. This is 2NBC and it uses n n TVCs where uh, tilde pi is the key TVC. They showed that with two rounds, uh, it has birthday bound security, and with three rounds, it has beyond birthday bound security. I'd like to remark that they also considered the domain extender for the ideal cipher and presented the analysis in terms of indifferentiability setting in the ideal cipher model. They also consider the more general setting of constructing tweakable block ciphers rather than block ciphers. Uh, this shows Minematsu's construction. It is a D and B C and uh, uses N tau N T B C. Where D is tau plus one and tau is at least one. So it uses a TBC with long tweaks, and this figure shows the case where the tweak length is two n bits, which gives three NBC. The middle part has D rounds, and G1 and G2 are key permutations that satisfy certain combinatorial requirements. They can be non-cryptographic permutations like pairwise independent permutations, or they can also be cryptographic permutations and d rounds can be used. Uh, namely, we have d rounds in the middle and we can use d rounds as g1. And uh, g2 can also be the d round construction. So we have D rounds here, D rounds in the middle, and D rounds here. So this gives us uh, three D round construction in total. Minematsu proved that the construction is secure if we use good G1 and G2. This table shows the summary so far. And in this work, we have three results. In theorem one, uh, we show that the security remains the same, even if we reduce the number of rounds by two from the Minimatsu's construction. In theorem two, uh, this L is a parameter between one and D minus one. And this shows that if the number of queries is at most two to the n, then beyond Bruce bound security is achieved as low as d plus one rounds when L is equals one. And the security exponentially improves by adding rounds up to two d minus one rounds. Theorem three he shows the birthday bound security with D rounds and there is a matching attack. So this bound is tight.
Uh, let me illustrate the implication with practical parameters. Assume that we use Skinny with uh, 128 bit blocks, 256 bit tricks, and 128 bit keys, or 384 bit tricky with our rounds, and assume that it is perfectly secure. Then we obtain a 384 BC with 128 times R bit keys. If R is nine, then minimat shows uh, this bound, and theorem one shows that the bound remains the same uh, with seven rounds. Theorem two shows that uh, if we have the same security bound with five rounds, provided that Q is at most two to the 128. Theorem two also shows that with four rounds, uh, this still has beyond Bursi bound security. And theorem three shows Bursi bound security with three rounds. Uh, we use Patahan's coefficient H technique and its uh, refinement by Chen and Steinberger in our security proofs. What we do is to partition all the transcripts that have a non-zero probability in the ideal world into good transcripts and bad transcripts. Then we derive epsilon one from the ratio of the interpolation probabilities and epsilon two from the upper bound of the probability to have a bad transcript in the ideal world. Then we retain the um, upper bounds of the advantage function. So let's look at theorem one and when D is three, uh, we consider seven rounds. We have the first two rounds here, uh, the next three rounds here, and the last two rounds here. We have S1, S2, S3, and S4, and these are internal variables. In the real world, we just compute the answer for a query following this figure, but we also release S1 through S4 to the adversary after making all the queries. In the ideal world, we use pi and its inverse to answer a query. So for an encryption query, we use pi to compute the ciphertext. And for a decryption query, we use the inverse of pi to compute the plaintext. To generate S1 through S4, we prepare dummy tweakable block ciphers. S1 and S2 are computed by using tilde P1 and tilde P2, just as in the real world. And we compute S3 and S4 by using tilde P6 and tilde P7. In the ideal world, we define that uh, transcript is bad if S1, S2, S3 uh, collides with the previous values of S1, S2, S3, or, or if F2, F3, F4 collides. Uh, these collisions cannot happen in the real world because this corresponds to this state and this corresponds to this state. And since the construction is a permutation, we cannot have a collision. However, uh, these collisions can happen in the ideal world. And uh, we see that the bad event involves randomness of three n bits. In the general case, we have uh, these 2d minus 2 internal variables, and we, we define that the transcript is bad 
if we have one of these uh, D minus one collisions. The bad event involves randomness of T and bits, and so we can show that the probability is at most uh, this one, where two to the DN uh, uses the fact that we have randomness of D and bits. We can also derive the lower bounds on the ratio between the interpolation probabilities if the transcript is not bad. And we have this final bound from the coefficient H technique. Now let's see theorem two, when D equals three and L equals one. Then we have this four round construction and S1 is the only internal variable. In the ideal world, we compute S1 with dummy tilde P1 if the ice query is an encryption query and with dummy tilde P4 uh, if the ice query is a decryption query. So we switch the way to compute S1 depending on the direction of the query. In the ideal world, we define that the transcript is bad if we have one of these three uh, collisions. Uh, this one corresponds to this state, and this one corresponds to here, and this one corresponds to here. Uh, we can check that uh, this one is impossible if the ice query is an encryption query, and uh, this one is impossible if the ice query is a decryption query. And we can also check that the bat event involves randomness of two n bits. In the general case, I will uh, not describe the details, but the bat event involves randomness of L plus one n bits. Uh, with this, we obtain this uh, bound on the probability of a bad transcript, where we rely on the condition that Q is at most two to the end to derive this bound. Uh, then we can show the lower bounds on the ratio between the interpolation probabilities, and we obtain this bound from the coefficient H technique. Now theorem three, it shows that we, with D equals three, uh, it has produced the bound security with three rounds. Uh, in this case, uh, there is no internal variable and the proof is simpler than other theorems. For the matching attack, we just make encryption queries with distinct M1 and fixed M2 and M3. So we fix M2 and M3, and uh, we have differences in M1. And we see that uh, C1 always takes distinct values in the real world, uh, but can, it can collide in the ideal world. So there is a simple birthday attack. Now let me conclude this presentation. Uh, we studied the security of the iterative block cipher constructions that use twickable block ciphers with long twicks and showed uh, these three results. As open questions, uh, we do not know if the condition on the number of queries can be removed from theorem two. Uh, the tightness of theorems one and two is open and we think generalization to enciphering schemes is an interesting question. Uh, finally, uh, the analysis in the indifferentiability framework would be interesting. And for this problem, uh, we made some progress in this paper.
um, that will be presented in this FSC 2020. So please check it. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.